Hello everyone. Today we are starting with the 12th chapter of history that is India after independence. Let's start. Post independence. The joy of freedom was mixed with pain and sadness. India was divided into two countries that is India and Pakistan. The division of the country was purely based on religion and the demand for a country for Muslims resulted in the formation of Pakistan. Soon after the declaration of partition, India saw the worst ever communal rights along with the indescribable brutalities which took many lives in India and Pakistan as you can see over here. The Refugee Problem The partition of India witnessed a mass migration of people from across the borders. People who came to India were homeless and had been forced to flee with little belongings. Settlement of these people was a major challenge for newly independent India. Relief camps were opened to distribute food and other basic necessities. New townships and colonies were developed to resettle them. Financial help, grants and scholarships were given to refugee students and gradually the displaced people were assimilated into the mainstream of society. Now let's talk about integration of princely states. Princely states are those states that are mainly under the control of king, prince or nawab. One of the major problems which India faced just after independence was that of integrating the princely states into India. The Indian Independence Act of 1947 gave them the right to decide their own future. They were independent to decide on joining either the Indian Dominion or the Pakistan Dominion. If the princely states had decided to act according to their own will, there would have been chaos in the country. But fortunately, under the abled leadership of Sardar Vallabhai Patel, India's first Home Minister, Many states were merged to India. Almost all states were merged except Junagad, Hyderabad and Kashmir. Now let's talk about the princely state of Junagad. The Nawab of Junagad, a princely state located on the southwestern end of Gujarat and having no common borders with Pakistan, chose to merge with Pakistan. If Junagadh went to Pakistan, communal right between Hindus and Muslims will start and it will go worse. So Indian troops were sent to reoccupy the parts of that state and to maintain peace. The Nawab and his family fled to Pakistan following clashes with Indian troops and likewise on February 1948, Junagadh was merged with India. Kashmir was ruled by Maharaja Hari Singh, a Hindu, although the state had a Muslim majority. Maharaja Hari Singh was adamant that Kashmir would remain independent, would not be part of any controversies. Pakistan was trying to occupy Kashmir from Maharaja Hari Singh. In that situation, Maharaja Hari Singh took the help of Sardar Vallabhai Patel and here they plan out a treaty. That treaty was like a condition if Hari Singh wanted the help from Indian government then they should merge with Indian. Likewise this condition and treaty was signed and Sardar Vallabhai Patel sent Indian force to protect Kashmir from Pakistani armies. So this is how Kashmir was finally merged to Indian Union. Hyderabad was also one of the princely states that were never ready to merge with India. But finally, Hyderabad was also merged with our Indian Union. So likewise, the person who was behind all this merging of princely states was Sardar Vallabhai Patel, the Iron Man of India. 
by the end of 1947 the task of integrating the princely states to the indian union was completed the states reorganization commission that is src was constituted in 1953 for the reorganization of states boundaries along linguistic lines in 1955 after newly two years of study the commission proposed 16 states and three union territories along linguistic divisions now let's talk about problem of national language india is a country with diverse languages our leaders wanted a national language to unite people of different religions it was decided that hindi would be the common language of free india with the formation of linguistic states in india regional languages had to be recognized so 22 languages were recognized as national language by the official language amendments bill 1967 the knowledge of hindi or english has been made compulsory for eligibility to all central government services preparation of a new constitution the constituent assembly was engaged in drawing up a constitution for india the drafting committee under dr b r ambedkar completed its work on 26th of november 1949 finally the constitution came into force on january 26 1950 when india was declared a sovereign democratic republic with dr rajendra prasad as its first president and pandit jawaharlal nehru as its first prime minister the constitution guaranteed all indians fundamental rights and equality before the law it prohibits discrimination on grounds of caste religion region and gender india was to have a federal government with powers demarcated for the center and state five year plans 200 years of colonial exploitation had left india economically shattered indian leaders realized that without economic freedom political freedom had no meaning so systematic planning was necessary to raise the standard of living of the people for this purpose the government set up the planning commission in 1950 and adopted five year plans beginning from 1951 the first indian prime minister jawaharlal nehru presented the first five year plan in 1951 the planning concentrated on developing areas such as irrigation energy agriculture industry and land rehabilitations India's foreign policy Pakistan, Afghanistan, China, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Myanmar and Sri Lanka are the neighboring countries of India. Since independence, India has tried to maintain cordial relationship with her neighbors. The main features of Indian foreign policies have been the non-alignment movement and S A A R C that is South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation. Now let's talk about the non-alignment movement that is N A M. After the Second World War, the world was divided into two major political groups led by two superpowers that is USSR towards Eastern Bloc that is Russia and USA towards Western Bloc that is America. After independence, India did not want to be part of either of these blocs. It chose to follow the policy of non-alignment in world affairs, which meant not aligning with either of the military blocs. India, along with 29 newly independent countries, met at Bandung, Indonesia, in 1955 and passed a resolution of five principles 
called the punch shield now let's talk about these principle these principles are mutual respect for each other's territorial integrity and sovereignty mutual non aggression mutual non interference in each other's internal affairs equality and mutual benefit peaceful coexistence the non aligned movement is a group of states which do not align formally with or against any major power blocks pandit jawaharlal nehru president tito of yugoslavia and president nazar of egypt were the founding fathers of non alignment movement the south asian association for regional cooperation that is s a a r c seven countries of south asia have came together and formed the south asian association for regional cooperation these countries are india pakistan bangladesh nepal bhutan sri lanka maldives recently afghanistan was included as the eighth member zark was been established with the objective of mutual economic and social development of member countries now let's talk about the principles of zark first respect for sovereignty territorial integrity political equality and independence of all member countries second non interference in internal matters third cooperation for mutual benefit fourth all decisions to be taken unanimously needing a quorum of all seven members fifth all bilateral issues to be kept aside and only multilateral issues to be discussed without being carried away by bilateral issues so all these were the principles of zark and all the member countries will have to follow all these principles now let's talk about india's relations with other neighboring countries let's start with indo pakistan relations india and pakistan have had to deal with several serious bilateral issues such as border disputes distribution of river water and settlement of the refugees after independence with the intervention of world bank the question of river water sharing was settled peacefully by the indus water treaty in 1960 in 1957 kashmir was fully integrated into the union of india and the state of jammu and kashmir was created the northwestern portion that remained under control of pakistan army is today known as pakistan occupied kashmir that is pok two more indo pak war took place one in 1965 over kashmir and another in 1971 over the liberation of east pakistan which led to the formation of bangladesh indo pak relation suffered another setback with pakistan invading the indian territories in kargil in 1999 so likewise here we can see they both shared their borders but still disputes are there second is india and bangladesh relationships on march 26 1971 bangladesh became independent india helped in the independence movement of bangladesh and was also the first country to recognize Bangladesh as an independent nation Bangladesh faced several economic crises immediately after independence at that time India gave large amounts of aid to Bangladesh in 1972 both the countries signed a treaty of friendship and peace an indo bangladesh trade pact was also signed however there have been some disputes between the two countries on issues such as the construction of farka barrage by india and sharing the water of the hugli river transfer of the teen bigha corridor to bangladesh and illegal bangladeshi immigrants in india 
Third is India and Sri Lanka relations. India has had very friendly relations with Sri Lanka since ancient times. Both India and Sri Lanka believe in the policy of mutual help and cooperation. The island of Kachativu has been handed over to Sri Lanka and issues like the problem of people of Indian origin not being granted citizenship rights have been resolved. India under Mr. Rajiv Gandhi as Prime Minister had sent Indian peacekeeping force to Sri Lanka to resolve her internal ethnic problem. Fourth, Indo-China relations. The People's Republic of China was established in 1949. India established diplomatic relationships with China and supported China's right of admission into the United Nations. The Prime Minister of China, Chao E. Lee, visited India in 1954 and accepted the five principles of Panchashil for peaceful coexistence. The guiding principle of Sino-India relationship that is Indo-China relationship in the 1950s was Hindi-Chini Bye Bye. Border disputes resulted in a war between India and China in 1962. In this war, the Chinese army defeated India because of the intervention of the United Nations, the dispute between India-China border was resolved. Efforts were made to improve the relationship between them in the 1980s. In 1987, a warlike situation was avoided when Indian former Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi toured India and held talks with Chinese leaders. Fifth. India and Nepal relations. After independence, India's relationship with Nepal was based on two treaties. The Treaty of Peace and Friendship in 1950 and the Treaty of Trade and Commerce in 1950. Both countries agreed to acknowledge each other's sovereignty, territorial integrity and independence. Between the 1960s and 1980s, the relationship between both the countries remained stressful due to issues such as Nepal's growing interest in China and India's support to Nepali's opposition parties. However, relations between both countries began to improve and both countries decided to solve all pending issues such as restoring trade relations, reopening routes for imports and addressing security concern of both countries. Sixth, India and Bhutan relations. Bhutan is a small kingdom in the lap of the Himalayas. India follows a policy of friendship and cooperation with Bhutan. Soon after its independence, India entered into a treaty with Bhutan assuring responsibility regarding its external affairs defense and communication. Seventh, India and Myanmar relations. India has close relations with Myanmar since its independence. After Myanmar's independence in 1948, India helped her to secure economic and military aid for Commonwealth countries. India's policies towards Myanmar is of non-interference in its internal affairs. However, there has been the problem of cross-border smugglings between the two countries. Both the countries have resolved to cooperate with each other to check drug smuggling and other unlawful activities along the border. India is a vast country inhabited by people of diverse cultures religions, languages and race. We have labored hard in areas like food production, education and health. Tremendous progress has been made by us in the fields of agriculture and industries. But the problem of poverty still looms large in our country. Literacy standards are less and housing facilities are not available 
to millions in India. Gender inequality, child abuse, casteism, communalism and anti-social activities are some of the major challenges which Indian democracy faces. As the renowned intellectual and thinker Dr. Karan Singh says, we have to have a legacy of peace, not conflicts, of cooperation rather than competition, of hope rather than despair. Peace is a very precious and fragile commodity and all efforts should be made to maintain it. Maintaining good relations with neighbors is of a prime importance today. So here we end with this chapter. Thank you.